What is up, players? It is Warboss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to a wrap up video of another model that I will be posting up on the Warboss Tay web store. It's actually a diorama more than a model. It is the Empire Valley Rocket Kit. And uh, as you can see, I put it on a base because I thought the amount of bits that you get in the Valley Rocket box is so. It's, it's so varied, it's so diverse, and it's all really, really great. So you can see that it's supposed to be just the, the rocket uh, battery, the machine, and it's supposed to be the three crewmen on square bases, but I decided to put them all together and uh, create a little bit of a diorama using some other, other pieces. So uh, let's take a look at, first of all, the other pieces that I use just to get them out of the way are you have a little powder monkey there from the Empire Handgunners kit. You've got a bucket, which I filled with realistic water from, uh, I think that's from the Empire Cannon kit. Right there, let's see if we can get a focus. There we go. And you've got a grot from Warhammer 40K. I decided to paint him up kind of like he is a, a Warhammer fantasy with a very primitive handgun. So much more primitive than the, the Empire ones, but he's supposed to represent like a sneaky git that kind of goes behind enemy lines and uh, is kind of like a spy and ambushes the uh, Empire artillery. So uh, the theme of the story is the crewmen are distracted by their, their own things, they're in their own worlds. They do not see this little grot or Gretchen or Goblin coming up to uh, sabotage them. The only one who sees that grot is Powder Monkey. But Powder Monkey is having a hard time. He's not able to get his master's attention because his master is quite distracted, finding the ranges and so forth. And Powder Monkey is screaming, ah, 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 ooh, ooh, ah. But uh, unfortunately, he doesn't hear him. And the Grot is going to, this, is, this scene takes place seconds before the Grot fires. Powder Monkey jumps out into uh, the way to keep his master from getting shot, but unfortunately the barrel of black powder that Powder Monkey is carrying gets ignited and the whole thing goes up in flames, resulting in fiery, messy death for everybody. But <laughs> that is seconds after this, this snapshot takes place. I think this is great. It's like the little second right before all that craziness. So let's talk about what we've got. These guys are wearing the red and blues of the Altdorf, uh, the Altdorf colors. I think they're such a great, it's such a great color scheme. The, the red and the blue, and uh, I, I'm really glad I got to work with it. Thanks again to Antonio for uh, suggesting it and uh, requesting it, actually. So, all right, why does this guy have poopy pants? Because he pooped his pants. He is scared. He does not want to be there. He wants to go home to Aldorf, where it's nice and warm, and go back to his books. He does not like being at war. And <laughs> the master engineer here is, is distracted. He's finding the range. He's got this awesome range finder. Great bit. I loved using it. The uh, blue for the glass is basically just incubate by darkness and then paint a little bit of crescent on the lower right and the bottom part there. You can see first I went with Sotek green and then uh, Lothern blue. Then I did a little spot of white color in the corner and I uh, painted the whole thing with realistic water effects. You can also use gloss varnish, but I was already using the realistic water effects for this bucket of water, so I thought I'd just use it. Got two rockets on the rack there, a uh, little grot peeking out there to to uh, assassinate the master engineer. This is by far my favorite bit so far uh, in a long time. Could be my favorite bit of anything in Warhammer Fantasy. It is the gun case for the master engineer. You've got three pieces to it, the center there and then the two sides, which can be closed more to, I guess, simulate like that it's half open or only open one side, but I decided to leave both sides open, glue them in that position. And you've got on both sides pistols, with, I think uh, there's three shots there, three balls, and the gunpowder there in that pouch. So both on that side. Then you've got the handgun right in the center, or I guess they call it a handgun, but it's really like a rifle. And along with all of the parts to make the rifle, you've got six balls of shot. And it was just so much fun to see, like how cool is that piece? You never see it. I don't think there's any rules for it. It's just there, so thank you to whoever sculpted that piece, because I I think there needs to be more of these kinds of very creative, innovative things in all of the kits. More bits, please. On the top, you've got a little telescope there. So I painted the, the glass just as I did for the rangefinder. And then here's a piece I really had fun with. It is the textbook. 
I'm, I'm sorry, Igor, steady there, steady Igor. I'm sorry, master. Igor, why are you talking like that? I thought you sound like Michael Caine. Oh yeah, that's right, master. I talk like this now, I'm sorry. It's been so long since I've spoken on a video that I, I just talk like that for a second. All right, thank you, Igor. Get out of here. Get back behind the camera. Oh, I'm sorry, master. So there you can see I've painted a trajectory graph there on the left side. I had so much fun painting this. It's basically, you thin down your Rhinox hide. You can also use Abaddon Black or a Micron Arts pen but to get that uh, very, very steady uh, drawing there, I, I think I did use my brush. All right, and just mathematics explaining trajectory for for these guys since they're are, they're firing rockets, presumably. <laughs> if 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 things go well, which uh, does not look like it will be going well for them, you've got. Uh, I think one of the themes I was going with was this guy is grizzled. He's obviously been on campaign for a while. Uh, Igor, if we can focus on him, please. I'm sorry, master. There we go. And he's uh, he's been at it. He's got a, two feathers, big feathery plumes, poofy sleeves. He's obviously been at it for a while. You've got this gentleman here in the back, whose uh, his his facial hair is not as impressive, but he does have a feather in his cap. He does have poofy pants, and he is obviously in line to take over, studying the master's art straight from the master engineer himself. And then you've got. This poor guy who is, he just wants to go home. He wet his pants, he poo pooed his pants, he is not, he is not ready for, for war. Uh, he wants to just go home. And I had so much fun painting him. I don't know why I wanted to embarrass him so much. I gave him also water effects streaking down his face to simulate, I guess, tears. He's crying his eyes out, he's bawling, he's screaming, he does not want to be there, he wet his pants, he poo-pooed his pants, he is ready to go home. And I've said poo-poo far too many times in this video, so I'm going to wrap it up here. If you would like to purchase this model, I'm going to be putting it up in the web store. I had so much fun painting it, it is really a one of a kind. I think these, this is one of those models that you start painting, and I painted it for uh, the same local competition that I painted everything else for, but uh, this one did not win first place. and. Um, I, I just thought like, oh no, this one did win first place. I'm sorry, this one and Gut Rot. They both won first place and it was the uh, the Empire Handgunners and my Thunder Tusk did not win in that painting competition. So I remember hearing that this got, uh, this got first place in the artillery category and I was so stoked because when I first opened the box and I was thinking, okay, how can I build this artillery piece. The reason why I picked it as my submission, because it was, uh, I think the categories were single figure, squad, monster, and artillery piece. I thought first, well, let's do a, let's do like a Skaven thing, or maybe a, a I don't know, something that, that that's really crazy. And then I saw this kit, this box, and I thought, oh, I can really go to work on the colors for the, for the soldiers there, the crew even though the artillery piece itself is basically just silver with gold highlights and um, some some wood. Speaking of which, I love how the, the legs on the uh, the spokes of the wheel are basically, they look like table legs from the dining room table. I think that was a really cool effect. And uh, it was while I was building the model, and even when I unboxed it, when I looked at all of the different bits you get, and I thought, there is so much here. I could really do something, make a diorama, make a make something cool. So I hope this inspired you guys because uh, it was really just inspiration after inspiration for me to uh, create this piece. I love it. I, I think it was so much fun to make. It has a variety of different looks, colors, textures, and um, I think it would make a great piece to any Empire army. So for those of you who still play fantasy or for those of you in Age of Sigmar who use Empire rules and uh, the volley gun, not sure what, what the rules are or how good but it is, it was always kind of random. You know, it was one of those things that was uh, very random. You either win big or lose big. But uh, I think with this diorama, at least, if you have it in your collection, it would be a, a pretty cool thing to have on the field. So it's a one of a kind. If, if it goes, then it is gone for good. But if you would like me to uh, paint or commission me to paint one after it sells, then yeah, feel free to email me. And you can get a hold of me on warbostastudios.com and uh, yeah check out warbostastudios.com I've really tried to go over the look of it and redo the the web store and um, I'm charging two shipping prices right now for the UK and the continental United States and uh, if you're somewhere else like in China or Australia or somewhere else and 
would like to uh, get some of these models, just email me and let me know because I'm still trying to figure out the shipping calculator and everything. So uh, I guess that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. This poor engineer, he's about to get blown up. He doesn't even know it. And uh, check out more. I'm going to be posting up a lot of fluff and background extra stuff. And uh, the return of podcasts and audio casts are going to be coming back to my Patreon because it's so easy for me to just record a little bit of an audio clip, post it up there, and I can get it out a lot faster. I think my, my good buddy Joe B, Joe Borowski, was asking about it on Facebook. So yeah, um, general nonsense, the podcast does look like it's it's going to be offline for a while longer because of the amount of work it takes and uh, just to put up a podcast and to upload it and render it and connect it and, and link it and sync it and everything. So uh, Patreon is a lot easier. Then you can just download it, have it on your computer whenever you want. All right, that's it. I'm, I'm just rambling now. I'm a rambling man, you guys. So uh, thanks for watching the series of videos. This is going to wrap up everything that I've done in the past two weeks outside of my regular commissions. And I can't wait to show you what I've been doing there, too. I've got Party Girls. I've got some Mercs miniatures from the Mercs game and a bunch of terrain pieces, which I think are going to be pretty cool. Also, there is a Tau... Uh, two Tau vehicles that I'm working on. I'm waiting for some airbrush stencils to do some pretty awesome shard camouflage, but when that goes up, I think you guys are going to like it a lot. So that is it, you guys. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment, hit the like button, visit me on Facebook, and uh, if you want to support my studio, then I'd love to have your support over at Patreon. That's it. Thanks for watching.